So today we're gonna to continue with activity 2.1, need input. And we're gonna be looking at a new type of analog sensor called the potentiometer. Now the potentiometer is being used as an analog sensor. In our previous activities, we've taken a look at both digital and analog. We use the pressure sensor to detect whether or not the force sensor was being pressed using a digital sensor. We then went ahead and took a look at the flex sensor. By using analog values, we can test a range of how much that flex sensor was being bent. For this activity, we're gonna take a look at using a new type of analog sensor known as the potentiometer. The potentiometer is an analog sensor that detects rotational movement. The values for the potentiometer are anywhere from zero to 1023. The analog sensors send varying values to your microbit using the potentiometer. The value basically depends on the amount of rotational movement on the dial with your potentiometer. Now the potentiometer is an external sensor that can be attached to your microbit. The main difference with this sensor is that we are going to be needing to use three wires in order to connect it to our microbit. On lead one, you will be connecting the ground wire from the potentiometer to your microbit. On lead two, we'll be connecting it to either pin zero, one, or two. And on lead three, we will be connecting it to three volts on the microbit. Let's take a look at what you'll be completing for your potentiometer project. For your potentiometer project, we're gonna look and see what happens when we turn the dial on the potentiometer. We wanna observe what happens when we turn it left, right, or if it's sitting somewhere in the middle. Now, what we want our program to do is if we turn it to the left or counterclockwise, we want to be able to see an arrow that is pointing left as long as the value is less than 400 on that potentiometer. If we turn that dial all the way to the right, we should see a right arrow as long as the value is greater than 800. Now, if the potentiometer is somewhere in between 400 and 800, we should see a straight line on the microbit LED screen. So let's go ahead and take a look in MakeCo to see how we would write this program. Based off of our flow chart, we're gonna be turning that potentiometer to the left, to the right, as well as to see what that middle range is. In order to write our program for this, you can see that we are being asked two different questions. Is the potentiometer turned to the left or does it have a value of less than 400? And is it being turned to the right, which meaning it has an analog value greater than 800? Because we have two conditions, we're gonna to need to add in our logic statement. And in that logic statement, we're gonna be adding in an if then else statement. We'll also need to add an additional else if for the second condition. The else statement is going to run if neither the if or the else if are true. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is to go ahead and create our variable. So we're gonna select our variable and we're just gonna go ahead and call this potentiometer. Once we create our variable, the next thing we're gonna to need to do is go ahead and set that potentiometer to read one of the analog pins. Based of our flowchart, we can see that the potentiometer is connected to pin zero. Because the potentiometer is an analog sensor, we will be using an analog read pin. So under our advanced drawer, we're gonna go down to our pins and we're gonna find the analog read pin. We'll drop that into the zero. So now that our variable reads, the potentiometer will be set to read whatever the analog read pin zero is. Now that we have that variable set, we can go ahead and write our first condition. The first condition states that if we turn the potentiometer's dial to the left, or if it has a value of less than 400. So we'll be using a comparison block We'll make sure that we have less than, and for this, we're gonna go ahead and state if the potentiometer is less than 400. If that is a true statement, then we wanna see an arrow pointing to the left. We can find our arrows under the basic drawer, and down towards the bottom, we'll see a show arrow. We'll wanna change that arrow from north to west so that it points to the left. For my second condition, we're gonna to look to see what happens if we turn that dial to the right. So just as we've done before, we can go ahead and duplicate our comparison block. And before dropping it into that else if, we're gonna go ahead and simply change the less than to greater than and the value from 400 to 800. Go ahead and drop that comparison block into the else if statement. 
So if the potentiometer is greater than 800, we now want to see an arrow pointing to the right. So we'll go ahead and duplicate that show arrow and we'll go ahead and change that from west to east. Now by doing that, we have two questions or two conditions we're being asked. But what happens if neither one of those conditions are true? If my if or else if are false, then we will run whatever is in that else state. Based on our flow chart, we're gonna go ahead and just add a straight line on the LED screen. Now we can go ahead and check to see what is happening with those values. So here you can see we have an arrow pointing to the left, which means that value must be less than 400. And if we look at pin zero, we can see that little white zero that's telling me that is my value. So we're gonna go ahead and slightly move that number up until it's greater than 400. You can see that it is now greater than 400, but still less than 800. Therefore, we get that straight line. If we go ahead and increase that so that it's above 800, we should see the arrow to the right. Now, don't forget when we connect this potentiometer to our microbit, we need to find a way to check the value in real time. And in order to do this, we're just gonna simply go ahead and select our input drawer, and we're gonna add an on a button press. From here, we'll go into that basic drawer and grab a show number, and we're gonna go ahead and place a potentiometer into that number zero. This way, whatever our value is in real time, we can go ahead and check. So here you can see our value is 147. And if we hit the A button, we should see the number 147 scroll across the screen. That will help you when we are using this in real time testing. Now that you've completed the potentiometer, it's time to move on to the next activity.